Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I am going to show you how to solve a pipe network system using the Hardy Cross loop method. This first image shows you the system that I'm going to solve with the initial discharges already in it and also the loops that I'm already assigned and pipes. In this table over here I've um, just assigned or given the pipe properties for every each pipe there's going to be a length, a diameter and a roughness value and yeah you can see the pipes are numbered from 1 to 10 and the loops are used clockwise as positive okay in the second image I have put my first guess for direction and size of the flow in every pipe you should know how to do this but basically how it works is every node must have equal discharge in and out so for example this node gets 303.56 liter per second in so out of the node they must go 200 plus 103 equals the 303 and so forth for every node okay so I've already assembled my let's call it a template to make things a bit easier. Um, the Hardy Cross loop method is solved with a few iterations. For my first iteration I'm going to show you how everything is done. So what I've done already is um, set up my table which I'm going to use for loop 1, loop 2, loop 3. The pipes are in there as well as the properties and the table then requires discharge, velocity, Reynolds number, lambda from the Moody diagram, head loss, head loss over Q and DQ. And DQ can be determined using that formula. And small v over here is the kinematic viscosity which is needed when calculating uh, the Reynolds number. Okay. So first thing we need to calculate the discharge in a pipe or as I've said, we have already guessed the first ones, so I'm just going to assign those values. So for pipe 1, you can see it's going to be negative because it's going downwards and the loop positive convention is upwards for that pipe. So I'm just going to assign minus 1, 2, 46. Pipe 2 is plus 200. Pipe 3 is 40 and part 4 is minus 53.56 and part 3 already stated in loop 2 is going to be minus 14 part 8 down in 10 is going to be positive it's going to be sign minus 16 then part 4 in loop 3 is going to be plus 53.56 5 is going to be minus 15 5 6 is going to be 100 7 8 and 5 7 is going to be minus 30.8 sorry okay okay there we go next we need to calculate the velocity that's quite easy we use the equation q equals v over a so v is going to equal q over a but remember our q is in meters per second so we need to divide it by a thousand to get cubic meters per second and then divide by the area which is 0.25 times pi times d squared that should give us the velocity I hope that is correct
Okay, next we need to calculate the Reynolds number, which is velocity times diameter divided by kinematic viscosity. So that's quite straightforward. But just remember that the Reynolds number cannot be negative. So we're just going to put the absolute value in front of it. Times V divided by that. Also, that value is not going to change as we draw it down. Fix it to that shell. And there's our Reynolds number. Next, we need to solve lambda. Now, lambda is quite a long formula. You can just look at it yourself because I'm not going to, it's too big to write in a single cell for you to see. But I am going to load this Excel file to Google Drive so you can look at it there if you want to. So lambda. Next we need to calculate the HF, which is also another formula I'm not gonna show you. But yeah, you can see it in the file once you've downloaded it. Eight times lambda times L times Q squared divided by pi times pi one point eight one times D So HF, HF over Q is straightforward, is what it says. That can't be right, or HF is way too big. Times, not divide. That looks more realistic. Also, I've forgotten one thing. HF must get the same sign. Excuse me, as Q. Just to make sure that it has the right correct sign. Just questioning my H of Q value at the moment. I'm going to keep my Q in liters per second, sorry, to ensure that when I get my DQ it's also in liters per second so I can just add and subtract it. Now, DQ is my correction factor as you can see there, but before I get to that I must just complete the rest of them. Okay, 
here you need sum of h f so I can move the sum of those as well as the sum of h f of q DQ has been determined. Sorry. Good dollar sign there again. Basically, I'm just going to repeat the same thing for my next loop. Just going to copy that, paste it there, paste it there. Everything looks fine. Just remember, I need to change those values. <coughs> so, K27 is going to be K33, I think. Yes. And also L3. But I think in order to make it easier for to copy and paste for the next and for the next iteration and the one thereafter, it's going to be easier just to remove those dollar signs. Tedious, but trust me, it will pay off in the long run. Just gonna copy those. Okay, now that's done. Now you can see some pipes are in two loops. For example, pipe four is in both loops one and loop three. Now, as you can see, pipe four has therefore two dqs so the way you cheat that is basically you go I'm gonna do dq other and on pipe one is not a problem pipe three and pipe four pipe three is in loop two so that is going to be equal to two pipe three and pipe fours sorry not that one, that'll be EQ. And part four is gonna be that one. And exactly the same part three is gonna be that one. And part four Now, DQ effective is going to be that DQ minus that one. So I'm just going to select all of them. That's where all zeros. I'm just going to delete. I'm not interested in those. As you can see, if you look at part 4, it's minus 19, and the other one is plus 19. And that is correct because part 4, for example, goes positive in the one direction and negative in the other loop. Okay, so that is our defective. So now I'm just going to assign a new Q value, which is going to be. 
equal to the first gate Q plus the effected Q. I'm just going to take that down as well. Erase the zeros. I'm going to make sure the units are applied correct meters per second. Okay. So basically, that is our first trial. Now this needs to be repeated for a second time, and that is really quite easy. So I'm just going to copy it. Firstly, I'm just going to make it look a bit better. So I'm going to put a thick border around it, so you can see what's going on. Then I'm going to say copy, paste. Then what needs to be done is those values are need going to be equal to those values. I'm going to say that equal to that, and for the others I'm just going to bring it down, change everything, and as you can see that there is our second trial, and we can continue until we are happy with our answer. So you know you are happy with your answer when the DQ is relatively small. So I'm not going to do bounded times now, but I'm just going to repeat like maybe another two. You see my DQ is changing really, really quickly. This is drop three, I reckon. We're gonna do this one more time. There is already a zero Q. I'm going to do it once more. Click on the number my trial. Four. Copy it once more. And so forth. As you can see, my Cues are not changing that much anymore, but for accuracy's sake, you can do this at least nine or ten trials until you are happy with the answer. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and let me know. Send me a message or just leave it in the comments if you want me to do a tutorial on anything else. And thank you very much.